Hello, Hi, friends. Grade Ones. My trusty sidekick, Tristan, and I are here today for our Tuesday Hi. video. Did you find a hedgehog to listen to the story with us, Tristan? Yeah. Jack, because he has a long snout. I love him. Okay, did you want to tell the kids what story we're doing today, Tristan? A house is a house for me. So today's story is a story that plays with language. And some of what the author does is rhyming. And we've done lots of rhyming practice this year. So as you read the story with me, grade ones, I'd like you to listen for the rhyming words. Sometimes the rhyming is a bunch of words in the same line, like snug as a bug in a rug. And sometimes the rhymes come at the end of two different lines. So you can pay attention and listen for that as we go through the story. A really cool thing the author does is to share ideas that really make us think. So at the beginning of the book, she'll talk about houses um, in the way we're kind of used to thinking about them. So a hive is a house for a bee, a barn is a house for a cow. But as we keep going through the book, watch for how she helps us stretch our thinking. A House is a House for Me by Marianne Hoberman, illustrated by Betty Fraser. And we are reading it today with permission from Puffin Books. A hill is a house for an ant, an ant. A hive is a house for a bee. A hole is a house for a mole or a mouse. And a house is a house for me. A web is a home, a house for a spider. A bird builds its nest in a tree. There is nothing so snug as a bug in a rug. And a house is a house for me. A coop, that's a house for a chicken. A sty, that's a house for a sow. A fold, that's where sheep all gather to sleep. A barn, that's a house for a cow. It is also, of course, a house for a horse. A kennel's a house for a dog, a dog. A dog is a house for a flea. But when a dog strays, a flea sometimes stays, and then it may move in on me. Houses for rabbits are hutches. A house for a mule is a shed. A castle's a house for a duchess. A bed bug beds down in a bed. Mosquitoes like mud holes or puddles. Whales need an ocean or sea. A fish or a snake may make do with a lake, but a house is a house for me. A shell is a dwelling for shellfish, for oysters and lobsters and clams. Each snail has a shell and each turtle as well but not any lions or lambs. Lions live out in the open. Monkeys live up in a tree. Hippos live down in a river. Now what do you know about me? An igloo's a house for an Eskimo. And now we use the word Inuit instead of Eskimo. A teepee's a house for a Cree. A Pueblo's a house for a Hopi. And a wigwam may hold a Mohi. When the author tells about houses for living things, it fits with what we already know. As the story goes on, she asks us to think about houses for non-living things. And because they're things that move, it's easy to make the connection like, a, a garage is a house for a car. A garage is a house for a car or a truck. A hangar is a house for a plane. A dock or a slip is a house for a ship. And a terminal's house for a train. A husk is a house for a corn ear. A pod is a place for a pea. A nutshell's a hut for a hickory nut. But what is a shelter for me? A glove is a house for a hand, a hand. A stocking's a house for a knee. A shoe or a boot is a house for a foot. And a house is a house for me. Next, the author does something really tricky and asks us to stretch our brains. Are you ready? Pay attention to the really cool ideas that she shares in this next part of the story. A box is a house for a tea bag. 
a teapot's a house for some tea. If you pour me a cup and I drink it all up, then the tea house will turn into me. Cartons are houses for crackers. Castles are houses for kings. The more that I think about houses, the more there are houses for things. And if you get started in thinking, I think you will find it is true that the more that you think about houses for things, the more things are houses to you. Barrels are houses for pickles and bottles are houses for jam. A pot is a spot for potatoes. A sandwich is home for some ham. The cookie jar is home to the cookies. The bread box is home to the bread. My coat is a house for my body. My hat is a house for my head. Perhaps I have started far-fetching. Perhaps I am stretching things some. A mirror is a house for reflections. A throat is a house for a hum. But once you get started in thinking, you think and you think and you think how pockets are houses for pennies and pens can be houses for ink. How peaches are houses for peach pits and sometimes are houses for worms. How trash cans are houses for garbage and garbage makes houses for germs. And envelopes, earmuffs and eggshells and bathrobes and baskets and bins and rag bags and rubbers and roasters and tablecloths, toasters and tins. And once you get started in thinking this way, it seems that whatever you see is either a house or it lives in a house and a house is a house for me. A book is a house for a story. A rose is a house for a smell. My head is a house for a secret, a secret I never will tell. A flower's at home in a garden, a donkey's at home in a stall. Each creature that's known has a house of its own. And the earth is a house for us all. I hope you enjoyed this story, grade ones. Um, I think the author's right when she says, but once you get started in thinking this way, you think and you think and you think. So I hope that you are able to let your brain stretch and think about things in a new way. And maybe you can even find somebody in your family to share your cool ideas about um, what could be houses for things. And don't forget, just like the ending of the story, the earth is a house for us all. So it's really important that we take care of the earth. Have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye.